For those of you who may not have been here earlier in the day, my name is Michelle Mater. I'm a faculty member here at the New School in Media Studies and Film. I'm also the curator of this film series, Creatively Speaking, for the past 18 years. We have been screening work by and about people of color in venues all over the country as well as internationally. And our main objective is to expose audiences to work that you might not see in mainstream media and to be able to dialogue around this work. And that's where the name Creatively Speaking comes from. Um, and we're really excited about this segment of the program because this is, this is today. You know, Creatively Speaking has been around 18 years, but we try to always stay relevant. And um, what's relevant are the amazing emerging makers that are sitting around this room. Um, my two amazing curatorial assistants who've been working with me for the last three years, Darren Mallet and Empress Varnado in the back of the room. And this is their brainchild, BB Digital, black, brown, and digital. And um, you are in for a treat. You're gonna see some excerpts of some of the work that is currently available online and some of the amazing makers um, that come up with these great ideas. I mean, the, the talk about the technology, using the technology in a way that makes it accessible and entertaining and engaging, at the same time informative. This group of, uh, of folks has figured out a way to do that and then some. Um, and there's a bunch of cast people around the room too, which you guys will introduce. You'll introduce the cast folks later or do you want me to have people? Okay, so I like doing this part. So um, there's some folks here from Brett and the City Brett Sanders and the Breton City crew, stand up. Come on, so we can see you. If you haven't, se if you haven't seen Brett in the City, you don't know what you're missing. Oh my goodness, it is an amazing series. There are folks here from Transplants. Malika Shabazz, stand up. Malika, a new school media studies student. Her work is amazing as well. There are folks here from Young and Reckless. I understand. Yes, here we go. Tell me your name. This is William. Thank you very much, William. There are folks here from, what am I missing? Tropico, how could I forget? <laughs> Joe, Ulo, and crew, everybody who's here from Tropico. Wow. <laughs> and this is a series that's not even out yet, okay? <laughs> So this is really, really new. And we have the whole crew here. This is fantastic. So um, thank you all so much for coming. And I'm going to now turn over the microphone to Empress and Darren. Hello, everybody. First of all, raise your hand if you have Twitter. Good. Great. So. What we want you to do today is make sure that you are following the discussion online on Twitter um, using the hashtag BBDigital, because this is a very interactive show. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so welcome to Black, Brown, and Digital, um, or BB Digital as we like to call it. This is Darren and I, this is our, our baby. Um, but Black, Brown, and Digital is a brainchild of Creatively Speaking, and Project Black, which is an online uh, channel for series made by people of color. Last year, last year, Darren and I created BB Digital as a way to give um, new media content creators of color a platform to share their stories and build community. Um, we showed about six different web series last year, um, and a couple of them have just done so many great things and built a really good community. Uh, we're also in the business of bridging the web series uh, content creators with uh, their targeted audiences. Um, and that happens through having discussions between the web series themselves. Um, yeah, so tonight we are featuring an eclectic group of web series and uh, we have 
the content creators here to discuss with us uh, after we view like trailers of their work. We have seven, I believe, tonight. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, and then later on we have um, Professor Vinay Saldry. Yes. He's, uh, you wanna give a quick little? Right, so today, um, Black Brown Digital, we're presenting the DIY culture. We're just focusing on the importance of us not waiting for the big companies to give us a chance to show our work, right? And new media is something that everyone can do. You can do it with your cell phone, you can do it like, like with, with a 5D camera, anything. So that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, we have, not only do we have a web series content creators, we also have a professor here on campus who teaches a class on web series. And we also have Miss Andrea Lewis from Issa Rae Productions and Black Actress to just close us out today. So here we are, Black, Brown, and Digital. Black, brown, digital. Black, black, brown, digital. Black, brown, digital. Black, brown, digital. Black, brown, digital. Black, 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 black brown, digital. Black, brown, digital. I'm gonna get my building sub guns for like 300 a pop. I'm gonna save up and get me one. You go to 198? No. Yeah, you do. I don't go to that fucking school. I do my own thing. Gotta get this money. Boom. 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 Bad little boy. Yes. You know, the city of Detroit is not in its the greatest place, you know. Um, it's actually in probably some of the most, the most worst shape that it's ever been in. But there are still beautiful things happening. There are still so much more going on than what's constantly being um, portrayed in the media. And no one seems to want to look at that side. Everybody wants to come and take pictures of the old train station on Michigan Avenue. You know, nobody wants to really, really, really take a look at what Detroit is. This term, desolate, comes up a lot, where people will say, oh, you know, oh, I went to Detroit, it was so desolate, it was so empty. And, you know, of course, like, living in New York City, we're kind of packed like sardines and basically live on top of each other. It's a very, uh, you know, a very highly populated city, so Detroit may not look like a big city or a big metropolis such as New York City, but there are people there. And I feel like perhaps the reason that people feel that it's so desolate and it's nothing there is because why? It's a bunch of black people. A lot of people don't know that Detroit is one of the most highly, it is the most highly populated black city within the nation. I could be off a few numbers, but Detroit is about probably like 93, 94% black. So when you have people who aren't, number one, they aren't, you know, mostly white people and people who aren't people of color, they come to the city and say, oh, there's nothing there, there's nobody there, it's desolate. Why is it perhaps that because you don't see the black faces that are there? You don't, you're not, you don't see them in your regular everyday life to begin with, so of course you come to the city and you say, there's nothing there. I know that again, like there are people who are making things happen, they're finding their own ways. A lot of people are turning to entrepreneurs. Um, you know, they're starting businesses and they're just making it happen and doing what Detroiters know how to do and that's hustle hard. I don't know why Detroiters are here. I guess everybody came for their own reason. Well, why did you come? Hey, I'm Brett, and welcome to my all-new web series, Brett in the Brett, City. Brett, Where, Brett, huh? the boom. How, the, so how do I boom. hold it? The, I, I, I'm the shot. Why do I have to hold it anyway? Hey, I'm Brett, 
and welcome to my all new website. It's really guys, I can't. I like to think of myself as a pretty cool guy. Somewhat sophisticated. And most certainly a ladies man. This isn't working for me. That was just magical. No, it wasn't. I moved to the greatest place in the world, New York, hoping to finally follow my dreams and one day hit it big. But for now, I ended up working here, at this place, where I sell copies for a living. This is my boss, Chris. He really thinks I have a great future in this business. You couldn't sell badges to a hooker. <laughs> and this is my co-worker, Martin. I wish I could just let myself go like you. How freeing it must be to just wake up in the morning and not give a shit about what you look like. You're my hero, man. Martin really looks up to me. This is my therapist, Dr. Jones. She helps me out quite a bit. She always knows just what to say to make me feel better. This is great. You're dumber than I thought. I'm sorry. Can't continue. And finally, this is Yvonne, my arch nemesis. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I got an arch nemesis. Oh, I almost forgot the most important person of all. My best friend in the world, Bobo. Bobo just really gets me. Well, that's the show. I certainly hope you check it out. Sure to be a lot of fun. Yo, bro. Yo, what the fuck? Man, you throwing this ball like that, dude, man. Come on, man. Get that ass Get that ass up. Get that ass up. So I heard it's your birthday. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, I got something for you. What's that? It's a girl named Molly. Can't be pregnant because you're on the pill, right? You, you, you can't. You, that's not a. That's not a possibility, right? Right? I may have forgotten to take it a few times. You forgot to take it a few times. What the fuck, Ash? Long time no see, Chanel. Who's this? Nobody. Yo, I'm standing right here. Why you ask me, man? Nah, chill. Let's go. Let's we out. I'm talking to you. Get your hands off of me. I'm out. Leaving is what you do best, huh? Do you really want to go there? Really? Yeah, Chanel. bro. She was wise, though, my man. Chill the fuck out. This ain't got nothing to do with you, all right? Chanel is my girl. Your girl? Oh, Chanel, oh. here. Oh, was okay. she your girl when she was bouncing on my dick? <gasps> no. Yeah, it's really funny. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. No! No! Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! There's no way I'm having a kid right now. There's no way. There's no way. There's too much going on. There's too much pressure right now. I cannot fucking have a kid right now. I'm not I'm not throwing away my fucking life for this. Then what do you want me to do? Say it. Say it. Just say it. To take take care of that shit. <laughs> Like that. Disrespecting me. Okay, when did this become about you? Did you fucking? You have you don't even have a right. No right to ask me that. So that's a yeah. My 
name is spelled O-L-A-J-U-W-O-N. My name means, my full name means I deserve happiness. Olajuwon. That's how you say my name in Nigeria. I've always said my name Juwan, 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 Juwan. It's not that hard to say, at least I don't think it is. But for some reason, since I was a kid, people are incapable of saying my name. And I think this is laziness more than anything else. I think they see it and it doesn't say Molly on it. So they just assume that it's hard to pronounce. So instead of making an effort, they'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And everyone laughs, like, I'm sorry, what's your name? And I say it, and they're like, okay, well, we're just going to call you something else. So pretty much since I've been a kid, I've been called everything except my name. Um, I've been called Ola, and I've been called um, What Did You Win, which I find really interesting because you won, and, like, you know how a lot of cultures, they don't, you know, the J is pronounced with an H, so you won. And so they'll be like, what did you win? So then that caught on as a nickname. But the Juju thing happened. I was um, I was in an interview um, and the guy was like, how do you say your name? And I said, Juwan. He's like, I'm not going to remember that. And I'm like, it's two syllables. <laughs> Juwan. Like, what's so hard about it? And so um, he's like, no, no, no. He's like, we got we to give you another name. You know, he's like, um, hmm, what are we going to give you? What are you going to give you? I'm like, well, my family calls me Juju. And he's like, that's what we'll call you, Juju. So till this day, um, people that I worked with years ago still call me Juju. My name is Ola Joanna Jai, and I am Nigerian American. I am Joyful Drake, and I'm a black actress. I think you just have to take care of yourself, and taking care of yourself means what you eat, what you don't eat, and the company you keep. Um, happy people are normally surrounded by other happy people. And I'm guessing you did something incredibly stupid or embarrassing. No, I didn't. I politely wiped off his cooties because I don't know him. <laughs> his cooties? I'm like, are you like 12? I'm assuming you've never had sex. Jean, did you just say 12? Well, I was just, it's a bad age. Bad, very bad age for me. Are you, are you 12? N no, I'm, I'm, I'm not 12. I'm, I'm a little, uh, you're right, I'm a little older. I went to fat camp at 12 and I will never, ever go back to fat camp, right, Jean? I thought you said he was cute. Uh, he's decently over a six. Uh, shut up, Corey. He's hot. I saw a picture of him on that stupid site you're always on. I am deep. I don't know. So he's barely above average, but you stalk him online. Um. It's called IMDb, and it's the Internet Movie Database. It's a very informative site, and there's valid reason for me to check it on a regular basis. I'm waiting for mm. them to make me younger. Did I hear someone say Internet stock? Oh my gosh. I thought I was the only one. I go on my boyfriend, well, he's, he's my ex-boyfriend, Michael's Facebook page, and I just go in there for hours. He has a new girlfriend. She's way skinnier than I am. But that's okay, because I run in the gym like 85 hours a day, and I'm totally gonna be hotter than her soon. And my nutritionist says, like the new new, that if I just have the right amount of caffeine every day, I can just run, like I could just run forever. You could like run away from all your problems. Does this color make me look thin? Shelly, I think it is time for you to pay. See ya, I, I said you. Either way, this is another opportunity ruined by the crazy brain of Corey Bailey. How is a kiss on the cheek an opportunity? It is a potential opportunity for your punani. Jean, you ain't never lied, girl. Preach! Hi, my name is Andrea Lewis, and I am the creator of Black Actress. And I want to say thank you guys so much for your views and your likes and your comments for the show. You can follow more behind the scenes of the show on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Andrea Lewis channel. And also follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at BA Web Series and like us on Facebook. Thank you guys once again so much for all of your support. It is greatly appreciated. Bye.
just give it up again for our uh, web series. And we have um, a few of our content creators here um, from the, the trailers that we've seen. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Joe Yulo from Traffic Come on down. Just for a quick Q&A. We have uh, from Young and Reckless. Kwana Marie, come on up. We have uh, from Tramplant, Transplants, uh, Malika Shabazz. She's here. Hi, and from uh, Brett in the City, Brett Sanders. And then um, to we also uh, have Professor Vinay Chowdhury. Come on up. Um, um, and then from Black actress Andrea Lewis. She's here. As well. Grand entrance, grand entrance. So um, we'll just go down the line and just introduce them really quickly. Uh, Professor Vinay Chowdhury is an owner of the Coit Pictures, a niche production company based in Brooklyn. Is that right? The Coit? Yes. Okay. The Coit serves a range of clients, including nonprofit organizations, um, music artists, television corporations, small businesses, and advertising agencies. A faculty member of the New School for Public Engagement, Chowdhury's current project, The Escort, is underway on location in Philadelphia. Um, All right. We have Brett Sanders here. Uh, well, Brett in the City is an alternative comedy web series based on a biographical blog by humorist and comedy writer Brett Sanders. Uh, the series chronicles those only in New York moments that a newbie encounters upon moving to the big city. <laughs> uh, newbie, sorry. Uh, Transplants uh, by Malika Shabazz. Tramp Transplants is a docu-series that focuses on the lives of Detroiters living in New York. Malika is the owner of Art Lifestyle Blog. Detro How do you say that? DT Girl NY World. DT Girl and NY World. NY World .com. Excuse me. Uh, Joe, you have Joe? So, Traffico is a story told through the lives of five main characters, all of whom are intimately involved in the violent and criminal trade of human beings. Founder and CEO of Brooklyn-based First Frame Films, Joe Yulo is an independent media producer working and studying in the greater New York City area. He's a new school student. All right. And Young and Reckless by Kawana Marie and Mr. William Runnels. Young and Reckless chronicles the lives of four college students as they stumble into adulthood and face the consequences of their reckless behavior. Hashtag college is a haze. Make sure you hashtag that on Twitter today. All right, and last but not least, we have Miss Andrea Lewis. Um, <laughs> we all know from Degrassi, sorry, hey. <laughs> okay, Andrea Lewis's career as an actor emerged at the age of five. Even before celebrating her 16th birthday, she has already acted alongside numerous Hollywood heavyweights. Taking her career to another level, Andrea now writes and stars in a daring and witty weekly web series on Issa Rae's YouTube channel. Miss Andrea Lewis .com. Give it up for our panelists. And uh, <clears throat> before I ask uh, my first question, our first question to the professor, if you guys can just take your mic. So we'll just go down the line really quickly and just uh, talk to us about uh, what inspired you to uh, create this, uh, your work. So we'll just start with Brett and move on down. Take a mic. Yeah, take the mic. Take the mic. Yeah. Keep it short. Testing, testing. Um, what inspired me was just I like to laugh and I like to make other people laugh and I like a lot of kind of raunchy shit. And um, Richard Pryor was one of my heroes growing up and I always wanted to do something kind of similar and kind of mixed with Woody Allen as well. And so I just kind of like raunchy comedy and we produce it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'm from Detroit, if you didn't know. And I'm pretty sure everyone knows about the image of Detroit. I think the news has killed it at least four or five times. And um, 
I was just really tired of hearing commentary from people that didn't live there, let alone people who used to live there don't live there anymore. So I just wanted to give those of us who no longer live in the city but are still very um, in, embedded in the city and still care about the city, just give us a chance to really talk about how we feel about what's going on, why we left Detroit, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, I'm a big Breaking Bad fan. I know. Uh, and The Wire. And um, really was uh, moved by those productions, those films. And I wanted to, as a filmmaker, you want to do something like that. And I did a lot of research and was shocked by what I found about human trafficking, how invisible it was. And uh, and it really, after, you know, the passion for it just grew. Uh, the more I read and more I found out. I found out 33%, 33% of all reported victims in the United States are Americans. And I thought that was, I was just shocked with human trafficking globally, but more shocked with that it's that you know that big here. And then the thing at the Super Bowl, you guys heard about that, really shocked me um, more. And I thought uh, this would be a perfect opportunity to create some type of awareness by telling a story um, and dramatizing it. So, anyway. I'm, I'm gonna use this okay. Hi, I'm Kawana Marie, and I am the co-creator of Young and Reckless. And I basically created Young and Reckless because I was really unhappy with the content and the shows that was on TV right now and how reality TV was basically taking over our channels and taking jobs from our actors. And um, I was also really unhappy with uh, the roles that were present for African-American women and African-American men, and I thought that uh, I had a lot of knowledge from this show, and I, I was just happy that I met someone that also had as much uh, knowledge and also as much courage as I did. And he, he, he also felt really strongly about the things I felt really strongly about. And we kind of came together and just made the show. And, and it's an unheard, it's a void, I think, in, for college students, especially college students of color. You know, we're not 90210, we're not Gossip Girl. You know, we have a real story and real issues that go on in college that I don't think people know about or can be prepared about. So that's kind of what we do and what we go into with Young and Reckless. Yay. Um, first, Small World Connect. Uh, Will, who worked on Young and Reckless uh, with Kiwana, is the editor for Black and Actress. Whoop, whoop. Um, so my name is Andrea Lewis, and I create a Black Actress one, because I am a black actress and I've always admired um, and just loved so many women of color that are pursuing acting that I wanted to find some way to celebrate them. Um, and then also similar to you guys, I, 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 I didn't see things that represented the young woman of color who was just like not ratchet and not bougie, who was just like a normal person doing normal things. Um, so I, I just really wanted to do that. And then at the same time, um, I, you know, I thought a lot of people were very green to what pursuing an acting career actually looked like, um, what it felt like as a person, and that it's not that glamorous. Um, but it's fun, it's fun, it's just, you know, like not cool also at the exact same time. So I kind of wanted to do something that explored all of that and that's what I did with Black Actress. So uh, going into my first question, what's really exciting about web series is that uh, uh, the technology, you know, digital, uh, photography gives us the opportunity to just pick up cameras, even our iPhones, and get to telling the stories that you want to tell really quickly. And then when you have a, a distribution platform like YouTube, you can upload it and have you know, really quick access to audiences. So I just wanted um, to ask Professor Vernet uh, if you could put in perspective, like, what does this mean to have such a quick turnaround process of, of filmmaking? Um, and how how big and what's trending right now? Just a. Um, a lot of my students are are here today, so they probably hear me um, sort of talk about this all the time. Um, it, it's I think it's about uh, simplicity of story and uh, turnaround time. Um, I, I do come from uh, traditional television, uh, and you know the content is obviously longer, uh, but. I guess the the 
challenge is always trying to um, make the con and I, I'm sure they all, these guys all know what I'm talking about is like making the content good um, but doing it um, in a way that um, you meet the expectations of your audience. Um, but I think that's something that you can train the audience. Like, you know, we've seen, and, and, and this, the, need, the medium is so new, um, th the rules are constantly changing. So just if I may ask a question to the panel, what's the average length of episode uh, of everybody's, of everyone's pieces? Or um, Mine's 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Ours was uh, originally 12 or 13 minutes, but we're now we're, with the new episodes, we're going into five, five to six minutes, so we're going short. Me? Um, this episode is a little over eight, but the next one is gonna be like about five, six. <laughs> Our episodes are in between eight to 12 minutes. Uh, we started out really, uh, we started out with eight and then people seemed to want more, so we expanded it and then some episodes we kind of went back to like eight or six, but I realized through analytics that people were dropping out between five and six minutes, so. Um, Black Actress was on average 10 to 13, would you say, Will? Yeah, 10 to 13, 25 minutes if I had my way, um, <laughs> but on average about 10 to 13. 10 to 13. So I mean, I guess my point is that there isn't the ideal length. I mean, I think when the medium um, was a lot newer, uh, you know, we were watching the stuff at work or, you know, on the computer, but, you know, that also has changed. Uh, so I think it's up to the content creator to, to, to do the sort of the back end work, to know the audience um, and to, and you know, you can, you, the great thing about the audience is you can talk to the audience. You know, you can find out what they like. Um, and then you can tailor your content. I mean, that's 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 the brilliant, um, you know, the nature of this this medium is that you can tailor it, and you know, you can build expectations. You know, I often um, in professional relationships, I'm often you know like, if it's a really high paying client, I often answer them immediately. Um, but if I condition the the client that I'm only going to respond once a day then the client knows that that's how I work. I only respond to things once a day. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think it's about having a strategy, um, seeing what, what works. Um, you know, I have my students look at case studies. Um, but then, yeah, devising your own, knowing who the audience is. Um, in my experience, I was uh, I was learning about low budgets. Um, and then when I started shooting uh, Brent in the City, we found out about the no budget, uh, <laughs> which is really uh, something to, to learn from. I just wanted to uh, go down the line and, and speak to what it is to shoot with no money, if you've done that, if you did any shooting before you raised money, or before you got any investors. Um, and then also, what has anyone been learning about monetizing online content? I can start off with shooting with, uh, shooting with no money. Uh, shooting with no money is interesting, but at the end of the day, I think it's a gift because we all will be, you know, in situations where we can shoot big budget projects. But it means so you learn so much on projects where you make no money. I mean, where you you don't have a budget because my favorite saying is necessity is the mother of invention. And when you don't have money, you have to you have to be quick, you have to be smart, and you have to be clever. And I think. Some of our best uh, moments have come just mainly because we didn't have any money and we had to make it work. And so. Okay, so I shot with no money and no crew. It was just <laughs> on me, one woman studio, all right here. I shot it, I edited it, everything. <laughs> um, but um, it, it teaches about organization a lot. And I think that's where my, the producer in me kind of kicked in because it was like, okay, you know, I, my goal was not to inconvenience the subject, even though I know them personally, so it could be a little bit more informal, like, look, Sunday, 3 o'clock, be there, I don't want to hear it. 
you know, it's because, but if this, you know, but that's because I know them personally, but it goes into a, also like maximizing not only the, the pennies you have, but your time as well, because people are working for free. And so since these are, you know, subjects who, this is a journalist who's worked for Huffington Post and I'm, you know, interviewed somebody else who's, you know, international DJ, these people who have commitments. So I have to be mindful of their time at the same time, you know, I may have a few overnighters upstairs editing, but it, it is what it is. When you enjoy what you do, it just doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, I, I think we shot Traffico, um, those about three days of shooting, we spent $300 all on crafty, on food, because uh, you really, uh, of all, take care of your cast and crew above all. Um, I think, because um, they're there for free, um, they're donating their time, they're standing out in the cold, and um, I also, for me, I think a, a technique, well not a technique, but it's just to do is, is to get everyone to have ownership of your production, because then now they, they want to do their best, they're going to work hard because it's theirs, and so that's what we did with Traffico, and I, I over the, um, as an undergrad, I'd saved my pennies and bought my own gear, so uh, rather than... Um, buying stupid stuff I bought actually camera stuff so I have my own gear but um, and also building community um, with your your cast and crew we have like I have a I have a big family a traffical family and they're everyone's dedicated as much as I am and I think it's just uh, sharing that ownership and also but first of all is take care of your cast and crew by that's where your money's got to go um, food definitely good food <laughs> not pizza or bagels all the time <laughs> um, I would say that uh, if you don't have a budget, it's fine. As long as everyone is just as passionate as you are, I feel like when there's a will, there's a way. And I don't feel like Will and I really had a budget to start until we started and we realized, oh, things are adding up. We should be managing money better. These people need to get paid. Some people don't. But even the people that don't get paid, you want to pay them. You just feel so grateful that they're staying later and that they're going above and beyond. But when you're doing something like beautiful and that you really care about, I just feel like a lot of people want to come on board and help. Like th there was people just reaching out from the woodworks that just wanted to help that we didn't even know. And they saw that we were doing something and that it was something good and they just wanted to be a part of it. And so money didn't matter. Like we definitely didn't get paid, you know what I mean? But it didn't matter at the end of the day, I think, we learned more than what we could have ever paid for. Like, we learned so much, and nobody could have taught me that. That's all through experience, and I'm glad I didn't spend my money on it, although school is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I, I had similar things to say that, that you guys did. You know, I, I did crowdfunding um, to gain a budget, and, and even though you do it, it's like, it feels like you have no budget um, while you're doing it. So, but I, I was just big on morale and, um, and I believe in the same thing in terms of like, if you're passionate about your project and, and you explain that passion to the people that you're getting involved, more than likely it's gonna rub off on them um, and, and it's a team at the end of the day. This is not just my project, it's everybody's project. It's, it's everybody's work. And the more I'm happy with the work that I do with these people, I'm gonna wanna work with them more and more. You know. And it's, so it's kinda like the stepping stone of just a lot of different things. So, I, and I think it's like, ain't nobody got a budget anywhere. You know, so it's like we're all so accustomed to that that uh, <laughs> I think people are surprised when you do have a budget and, <laughs> you know, that's more the thing. So I think today it's like you can you can make something on no budget because people are artists. They want to work. They just want to do something great. Can I just say one thing? I will say, though, pay your sound people. <laughs> they are so important. I think we spent the most money in sound, but sound is so important. And even today, I was like, wait, did I hear that right? Like, can I hear? And I know all the words to my show, but I wasn't, I didn't know if I really heard it, you know? Um, but you definitely want to spend money on sound, for sure, and feature cast. And, and by the way, sound is the, probably the cheapest way to raise the most production value in oh, your production. Yeah. Hell yes. yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so besides producing a content and actually creating it, marketing is extremely important and we're in the age now where we're using social media to really get our names out there so can you guys talk about how you're branding yourself in the online digital era um i work really hard on my social media presence it's important to me um and i i've always thought that um 
regardless of necessarily having a project at the time, I just know the value in what I, and who I am as an independent artist that eventually I am going to have to promote it to somebody. Um, so I'd hope that it's like, I at least have somebody on my Twitter that I can put this out to. Uh, so for me though, with my project, I. I tried my best to just truly think of who is gonna like this. Um, you know, it's one thing to see your fan base and then to just kind of imagine your fan base. And I think that's kind of the starting point. You gotta think who possibly could like what I'm about to make. Um, and then just be shameless. I was shameless in hunting down Essence Magazine and Ebony Magazine and these women um, to to promote my project. I, I felt like they would like it. I felt like they, you know, they have younger readers who could appreciate it. And I was just ruthless until I got a hold of them. <laughs> I, I, um, I want to echo that. Um, I use Facebook primarily because it gives us a lot of analytics, a lot of tools. But I pretty much found most of my cast and crew through Facebook. I use it as a production tool, producing tool. Um, and I think and, and it's also a good way to try out your idea. Um, I believe in using, taking photos and, and asking for feedback. And what you're doing is you're engaging an audience, a potential audience, a potential supporter. For Traffico, I think uh, we hit... We're over 1,200 likes now. I mean, and it's been since November 3rd. And because it's just, you're, I'm asking for people for opinions. I'm asking people to get involved. Matter of fact, I casted several of my cast here through Facebook. There, there's one of them, Gigi. She's playing young Maria. I casted her through Facebook. It's a, it's a way of con connecting with people um, or any social media. But Facebook, for me, allows me to see who my target audiences are, who is interested in my project. It allows me to test the waters because we don't have millions of dollars for market research. But um, I use it primarily to engage the cast, um, the crew, the, 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 um, and the audience. Uh, yeah, it works well for me. Okay, so for me it was a little funny because I was blogging for a while and like the whole Detroit girl in New York world, like that's kind of been my thing since I moved here in 2009. I started with a Facebook album, which turned into a blog, which turned into just, that's what people know me as. And it's funny because at first Facebook was my thing, but in the past like year, like Instagram and Twitter have just like blown it up. And I don't know, I, I'm, not, I'm still trying to figure out like, what did I post? That because now it's funny. I have a point. Like I've got like Jerobi from Tribe Called Quest. Like I think it was a Star Wars connection. But at this, but still, the same fact that he's actually they're interactive. It's not like someone's just following me. And then people are seeing that, and so now they're following me. Or like with Twitter, someone retweets something, and then they start following you, and it's just it starts snowballing. And so it's like okay, now I need to be more mindful that I'm not just posting crazy thoughts that are you know popping up in my mind at 3 a.m. because that's what Twitter's for. No, <laughs> but um. But um, just really starting to like reel it in because the thing with Facebook is that I still use Facebook, but Facebook is getting so saturated right now that it's sometimes it's it's become difficult for me to really differentiate between me and the other Skabunia people going out there. But for me personally, Twitter and Instagram have been really good in terms of like networking and meeting other people. In addition to the old fashioned business cards, can I stalk you on your phone? But um, in terms of social media and then just staying consistent that's one thing I've learned that you have to really be consistent. You can't get to that, you know, I got 14,000 likes and then you just stop posting. Because especially now with Facebook, the way Facebook is set up, you will disappear. You know, I'm not trying to be mean, but seriously, you won't be on their newsfeed anymore because that activity is gone. So, yeah. To uh, piggyback off what you guys were both saying, social media. I haven't mastered it yet, and the moment you think you've mastered it, it changes. And so I think that's probably if you want to do anything in digital media, you have to always be willing to learn. Because when we first started, I started out as a comedy blogger also, and Facebook was my biggest friend. Um, and now I'm finding that things are trending towards Instagram, and in another couple of years, there'll be something else new. Um, and so we always, I think, have to be learning and learning and willing to say, you know, <laughs> you don't know as much as you would like to know, and, and let's learn more. Um, what I would say is I would piggyback off of Andrea and say be shameless and tell every single person about your project. That's first. Like you have no money to put in marketing. If you're having a conversation and someone wants to know, like really tell them because 
they don't know. And if, you know, if they don't know, how are they going to find out? Um, and it's what you do. And if you're happy about it, you should spread the word because somebody here might have missed it. You know what I mean? They should have seen it. Um, but I also think that you should find who your medium is or who your target audience is and see what they really like. Like if they really like Instagram, let's focus on that. If they really are into Twitter, let's focus on that. And there's apps that you can pretty much do it all, but you really got to figure out which is best for you and your show. And you have to ask people to do things. Like if you want them to like it or retweet it, always put out there what you want people to do. Don't just put it out there and think that people are going to like, retweet, and then, you know, I, I, I took it personal. I was like, oh, they're not liking it. They're not tweeting it. You know, but you really got to ask them. You know, some people look at it, they like it, they smile, but they forget to press like. Just is not thinking about it. You know what I mean? They just keep on scrolling. But if you ask them, share it with a friend, like it, retweet it, they'll do it, you know? And, and, and then it becomes about being consistent and, and following back. If they write a comment, respond because they care. They're part of your community now. They've already, they're engaged now. Um, so don't leave them hanging. What we were doing was offering a reward. Like, if we reach 300 likes, you'll get, like, um, this guy right here playing Damon Howard. He, he did a song, the Traffico Blues song, as a reward for people. So he's playing the blues guitar. So we do that. We offer a picture or a video or something. Hey, help us reach a thousand, and we'll we'll do something for you. And people love that. People want to be. People want to see if you made it. They want to see you succeed, especially on Facebook. Well, not everyone, but anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, um, we. T you know, in, in class we talk about active viewership, um, and to get that active viewership, you know. Um, you might need to reciprocate like you might need to watch someone else's show you might need to like that like you know and then if you go the distance then you they'll go the distance for you um and set goals you know like i want to get two new f or not two that's too small 10 new fans a, a day you know if that's your goal like you know you don't go to bed until you know you you have 10 new fans right and you Right? Am I right, guys? Yeah. It's like and you can ask. Like ask your cast. Um, ask your crew. Like, I'm going to ask right now. I, I challenge my cast and crew to get me 100 likes per person. <laughs> so that's your challenge, 100 likes. So by tomorrow, we're at 2,000. All right. Just <laughs> thought I'd put that up. There they go. There's my, th those are my young actors now. And um, before we uh, open it up to the audience real quick, did you have a final question? Did you? Yes, just one last question. I know all of you are um, establishing your channels on YouTube, but Andrea, you are a part of Issa Rae Productions channel. Can you talk about that and the importance, the, the importance of that? Oh, and then, you know, I have a follow-up to that because there are other channels like uh, Black and Sexy TV. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Tracy Edmonds has one. I forget what it's aspire yeah so you know it's where you know several independent web series are banding together to have you know a community but like consistent programming mm -hmm. kind of mimicking larger platforms so if you could speak to your particular channel and then um professor if you could just speak to what is the future of that well you know how does big tv influence the future of web series and vice versa um, well, yeah, when, when I was putting black actors together, uh, we started pitching it to production companies and just different people, and, and we were kind of tossing up it with what exactly to do to make a pilot or to make a web series, um, and Issa had gotten a wind of what we were doing, and, and she just liked it, and, and we didn't quite have any scripts, we kind of had just like a basic idea, um, of what I was going for, and she just got it. She understood the comedy, and like you know, what she is trying to do with her network is expand it in terms of just giving people of color um, an opportunity and and just making diverse content, um, for specifically for people of color that are in this middle ground, right? Um, and so I felt that if I'm going to put something out on the web, especially something about a black girl, uh, who better than Issa Rae to pair up with and Truthfully, um, my experience, I just, I was not really interested in kind of starting a new channel for the show and, and, and doing all of that work. Um, I kind of wanted to, to go with somebody who was able to have 
an established fan base in terms of web content um, because like I had come from a television world um, so I do have a fan base in that sense but they weren't accustomed to seeing me, you know, write and create and produce a show. So being with somebody like Issa Rae, it was just a good partnership and a good co-sign for somebody who had already done something like that. And um, and now the audience was more receptive to it um, instead of, I don't know, Degrassi haters or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was, that was kind of my experience with that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so the question was, um, where are we in uh, in relationship to uh, like television, right? Is that uh, essentially what we're? Um, so you know, it was it was really uh, a great experience for me to sit in the crowd and watch all of the content. Um, and the the content was projected big, right? It's it's you know it would hold up in a theater and and you know, why should our content be inferior to television or motion pictures, right? We were we watched it, you know, collectively as a group, and we all reacted to it. Um, you know, there's, the, obviously, there's the, the marketing engine of, you know, um, the, the major uh, television corporations, which I work for sometimes. But, I mean, there's that that we have to compete with. But in terms of quality of content or, you know, its ability to sort of stand next to it, I feel like we're there. Um, and, you know, and again, like, it, it, I think it depends on the individual. So maybe if I could take a survey of the audience, um, how many of us s consume all of their entertainment on a personal computer or a device that's connected to a personal computer? So, I don't know, is that half? I don't know. I don't even own a computer. Um, so, I mean, again, so, I, you know, my, my point is that um, I think it's TV that really has to worry. Like, I mean, we don't have, I mean, I, I know that they're the ones that are, they're looking to us, right? They're looking at us, you know? And the mo I think the wh what's broken about the model is that when, you know, when people throw a lot of money at us, you know, we'll say, "All right, that's great." We'll, because the because it, it it allows us, it frees us up to to work on that um, solely, right? You know, that's what major entertainment does. It, it gives you um, because of advertising, right? The, it gives you the ability to work on that content. But um, I guess maybe we need to develop. Um, I don't know. It, it, right now, it just seems like the content is, is sort of pilfered from the web, and then it's sort of it's funneled to to um, you know to the studios and to major television and stuff like that. And maybe we just have to say no to it. I, I don't I don't I don't know. Like you know, like because I like because everything everyone's been talking about, like sort of the autonomy, uh, the the interesting content that we're making, um, will always get compromised. I think when you know when you take it. Um, when you know when a, a committee is involved and there are larger people making the decisions and brands, you know, advertising brands that have, you know, you don't want to offend the advertising brands mm -hmm. and that kind of a thing. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't. Th I, th I mean, I, we're we're there. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I think that they should be watching out. I have to agree with that. I think. Uh, on average, I have conversations every day with somebody who tells me they don't have a television anymore. Um, so I kind of think it's the same, like, you know, and you do, you have HBO recently, you know, they, they're developing shows with both Issa Rae and Black and Sexy TV, like, because they are trying to capture what's happening on the web. Um, so it's like, you, you actually don't have to worry about it. Um, I really think that. I think it's like, just the more ways we can find to monetize our content, um, bring bigger sponsors on board, merchandise, these things that, that help to bring in uh, revenue for you, you know, the more control you have, the better, personally. Uh, we have time for, yeah. We have time for two questions from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> I understand there's a uh, uh, Google and uh, YouTube have created a forum for artists to come to them to do creative. Have any, any of you approached Google about that or what 
response or what opportunities exist for that? Uh, I mean, I, I, I've read a little bit about the, um, and we've had a lot of guests in class sort of talking about, uh, they are, but they haven't really gone live yet, to my knowledge. Like, they're Amazon as well, mm -hmm. you know, they, they haven't figured it out. Um, the, the people that are running those channels, um, they don't come from entertainment, so they, they've been having some, some issues. So, I mean, I know that they've, you can't just throw money at, at, at something and hope and think things are going to stick. So I know that they are, and I know that there's tremendous opportunities for folks like us that make content. Um, and I'm sure they'll, they'll work the kinks out, but as, as of now, from one, the last thing I read, YouTube has uh, studios, but they haven't really, like, put them out yet. Like, but they have full-on studios that they want people to come in and shoot at. Like, pretty much they have production capabilities, but they haven't completely introduced it or sort of set forth a platform where we have to say, the, they can use it, they can use it, they can use it. So we're just waiting for that. Yeah. Right? Exactly. They still have the YouTube partners. But they, uh, it's for some of the YouTube partners, but they, they they want to get new people in because that's where uh, entertainment is going. And so that's their goal is, in addition to their YouTube partners that are doing really well, they want to make it easy for new, young, and up-and-coming people to get in and make things happen. Yeah, and they're, and they're lowering the subscriber amount on like all the time so that more and more people can have opportunities to go to the YouTube networks and, and just, you know, get more opportunities overall. We move from around the, the bin. Uh, I was just gonna ask you guys. So, um, like your Hulu's and your, you know, the Netflix that we talk about. A lot of them are owned by Hollywood studios. They're either in partnership or they have, you know, they have, you know, uh, interest in them, uh, money-wise. Have you guys thought about any way to grow without the studios? without those distribution networks? Can Black and Sexy TV be blackandsexytv.com by itself with nothing else and actually generate revenue uh, like the Googles, like the YouTubes, like the studios? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if you've seen recently, Black and Sexy TV just released uh, their, their new, the second season of their web series, Hello Cupid, and they did a pay-per-view type of situation where you had to pay to stream and download the first episode. It was a little longer. It was, um, you know, just something more. I think uh, people are going to start doing more things like that, um, which, I mean, is brilliant on Black and Sexy's part, and I I'm good friends with Numa, and she said that it was a success. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I don't know what that means. But it was a success. So like you would have to like establish your brand first. Exactly. Yeah, the, the exactly. So the thing is with Black and Sexy TV, we we do know them for turning out content on a regular basis, turning out shows all the time. Um, Issa's doing that. I think that is kind of the way to do those type of things is is establishing a brand um, essentially and and turning out content on a regular basis. Um, and and from there, that's probably when you can now figure out different ways to control and, and not have to go to these studios. Because technically, I mean, I think Black and Sexy TV is at a point like that. They don't necessarily need to go to these studios. They are growing a great brand. People love it. People love the content. People are for them now and get what they are doing. Um, and I think, you know, everybody in this room is kind of like that. Like, we're all for somebody to do something great and do something different. So I think the more content creators you have like that, um, the less we're going to need these Hulus and these Netflix. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you. Oh, go ahead. I had one. I was just going to say that um, to get to levels like Issa Rae's channel and Black and Sexy TV in order, and in my case anyways, to, to build the brand of Young and Reckless or to build this network 
or this fan base, um, I, I thought a good idea would be to partner up with people like ourselves on this on this stage. Like, how do you grow in numbers? You come together, then Joe's audience now becomes my audience, you know, and then my audience becomes his audience, and then you know, vice versa. Just you know, pair together. If you if you find a team or people that are work like you or their content kind of matches yours in some type of way, you know, band together and. Um, for our show, we I want to do like a college tour because really my show is for college students and pre-college students, like right before you're going to hit college. And so those are the people I really need to target and get to. So I want to do like a tri-state area and definitely go back to my school, uh, but also the New York area and, and just, you know, hit them up first and, and see if this is something that they would be interested in. And and that's a whole nother, you know, target audience. You, you just have to grow in numbers and, and figure out ways to to get to the levels where they're coming to you. Uh, for your content and they have already started doing that so we just have to continue that and find ways to to move more towards that I wanted to say thank you to uh, this event black brown and digital we were part of it last year and this is um, events like this are so important because what you're saying it allows us all to team up together we met a lot of uh, great people that were doing what we did last year at black brown and digital and we were able to build with them we were able to work with them we were able to create our own uh, little side network so thank you to you guys for putting on this event uh, is this the second time yeah, yeah. Because it allows us a chance to, to, or to talk to you guys and figure out what it is you guys are looking for. It, it allows us to tell you how you can help us because what you were saying, you really have to ask people exactly what you want. And so we're asking you to help us by spreading the word. Like if you have a, a digital program that you like, talk about it. And the more people talk about it, even if it's at work, people go, oh, yeah, let me check that out. And then that's how revolution starts. Yeah, and I want to echo that. I think you should all help us out. Can everyone just tell us your information, like, you know, your it's show? Your program. It's, well, I think it's important for us all to all, to, yeah, just yeah, to all. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's just why we're here. We we want more we want more fans. I will start it out. It's uh <laughs> Brett in the city dot com. It's uh, B R E T T not in the city but and the city. A N D the city dot com. Um we have YouTube, we have Twitter, we have all that stuff, but everything is consistently Brett and the city dot com. Not for kids. <laughs> no, it's not. I've seen it. Okay. Um so youtube.com backslash D E T girl N Y world. And then my Twitter handle and my Instagram handle, it's Malika with the H three one three BK. So Malika three one three. Detroit, New York. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh Traffico the web series. Uh Traffico dot the web series on Facebook. So Facebook dot com forward slash traffico dot the web series. Young and Reckless is a play on the young and the restless, but it's not that. And we get a lot of people that get the name wrong. So it is young in, not in like his, but in, and then reckless, like a wreck, like not a car wreck, but you know, reckless behavior. And but so since that's so long, it's just YNR web series. Anything YNR at YNR web series, Y N slash YNR backslash, whatever. Um, but it's uh, the actual show is on our YouTube pages, Turn Up Television. So it's. <laughs> so it's turn up. Uh, no, so it's youtube.com backslash turn up television. You can find us either way. Yeah. Um, you can find Black Actress on youtube.com slash Issa Rae, uh, or you can find it on my website, which is missandrealewis.com, and that's pretty much all my social media is right there. And so you will find all things to do with the show and myself right there. And I also have some students in the crowd that I just want to get some exposure for. Um, the flow can where can we find it at the flow web show at the flow web show hi i'm nicole this is Catherine. we're producers of the flow hey. web show <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah and we're collaborators by the way so we, we like to collaborate and we like to work with people. So if you have a skill or talent that you would like to, you think we'd be interested in, we love to hear you and listen to you, right? Yeah. Everyone, yeah. right? And explore your talents and skills and abilities and to see how we can collaborate together to make something out of nothing. Great. So, And um, we also want to take a moment to do uh, some thank yous. Uh, we have to, of course, thank Michelle Mater. Yes. Uh, 
And on the uh, Creatively Speaking team, we have Malika, who helped us out, Destiny Jackson, Crystal Glass for helping us with design, Alexandra Salazar, uh, Joe, Mr. Joe Yulo, and uh, the Black Hole Radio Network and family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, also, we have to thank Abita Austin, because she uh, helps us out greatly with uh, sound design and stuff. Thank you. And. Um, so thank you to all the content creators. Make sure that you're following them on Twitter and follow us as well. I'm at the Empress, it's at Mallet Darren, or Darren Mallet. Um, and so before we leave, we'll have some closing r remarks by Andrea Lewis. So. And um, can see me? Um, well, first off, I want to thank you guys for you know asking me be, to be a part of this event. I love coming to things like this um, because it's so inspiring. It's just like it's crazy inspiring. It's inspiring to see you guys. Um, it's inspiring to see the people here and, and how eager and interested you guys are. And I always, you know, when I meet young content creators, if there's one thing that I sh try to stress is that like we are in such an amazing time right now the limits there's like none you know nobody can tell you what kind of web series you can make nobody can tell you what kind of fan base or where you could put it like you know i put my thing on youtube I, you, you don't have to you could just put it on facebook you could do you know i have a friend that's done an instagram web series literally 15 second episodes like what i didn't even understand it so but it just shows you like there's literally no limit on the kind of content that you can create the kind of stories that can be told we're in such an amazing time that i think you know it's like we're all people of color talking about this but i think people of color are now trying to show stories of just the average person um just the 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 smart person, the person that, you know, came from a normal home, the person that just had a normal story to tell, and that's beautiful to me. That reminds me of, like, the Cosbys and Family Matters and, and that great feeling time for television. You can find that stuff on the web. And so whenever I meet content creators that are, or, or people that want to create content and they're kind of, like, stuck what to, what to do, I don't even understand it. Just do it. Literally just do it. We all just talked about, you don't even have to have a budget in order to do this. <laughs> um, you can meet people that can come to you and tell them your vision and tell them what you're about and they will believe in you and they will come on side with you. Or, hello, you can do crowdfunding. It's hard as heck, I'm not gonna lie, but it's, it's something, you know? So there's so many options now. Uh, so there's really no excuses anymore for anybody that has a story that they wanna tell just do it. Go out and tell it. Um, be enthusiastic about it. Remember that nobody cares as much as you do. So have 150% going into the entire thing um, and just give it your all. I never would have thought that I would have done Black Actress on my own. I would never thought that I would have truly, I had this idea for so long, so long. It really sparked, I was doing this Nickelodeon movie and one of the actors was introducing everybody um, to his manager and for whatever reason he introduced me and he was like, and this is Andrea and she's the urban one. And I was like so thrown because I was like, what? Like, you know, should I start beatboxing in this moment? <laughs> like, um, and I was the only one that got like the ethnicity intro, so it was like really strange. Um, and from there, I just was like, okay, so I need to like make something. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I had the idea forever, for just forever, and just did not know what to do with it. And then just honestly, the rise of these web series and just people that I saw that were like me, that had ideas, just doing it really made me say like, there's no stopping me. So I give that to all of you. There is no stopping you guys in terms of putting out whatever it is in terms of the content and the story. Um, that's just the most important part because we're diverse now. We all wanna hear everybody's story. There's, there's nothing to say that you can't relate to this one and that one. Like Hollywood really doesn't mean anything anymore. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Well, how about giving up another hand for these amazing artists? Thank you so much. And I just have to give a couple of special sh shout outs. Abitha Austin did our graphics from last year. Yay! 
he's amazing. And then Joe Ulo did our new opening here just to tonight, like for no, I mean, no time. Amazing. Thank you, Joseph. And, um, you know, this is, this is a conversation that we hope to continue. Um, I think it's really important. We encourage you to like us on Facebook, hey. Creatively Speaking Film Series, and on um, Twitter, we're at Creative SP Film and on Black Hole Radio. We do a radio show every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So if you go to Black Hole Radio, W-H-O-L-E, radio.com, you will find Creatively Speaking on the air. And just let's really continue to, to dialogue, continue to network. I think we have a wealth of resources right here in this room. So I encourage everybody to exchange cards, eat pizza, over there. And um, on your way out, we're going to listen to and watch a uh, wonderful, this is the, the first time this film has been seen on a big screen in New York. Uh, it's a music video by a new artist called 504 Gully. And the music video is created and directed and produced by Darren Mallett and Joseph Yulo. <laughs> and our star. Pearl Taylor is here in the audience, did a Pearl. Unfortunately, Gully couldn't be here. He had to go back to New Orleans this week. He's based in New Orleans, where the 504 comes from. But um, we leave you with celebrate your body, and we wanted you to celebrate your minds as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Make sure you sign us up. Sign up on our email list if you have not. And we look forward to seeing you soon back here or the next place Creatively Speaking appears. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Let me tell you this no pressure, baby. Come to four play, this my second nation. You don't know shit, then I educate you. You're a featherweight, then I elevate you. She can't control her body, I can't control my hands. She let me know that she got it. She said she about to go ham. So I hit recline and I let her ride. She feel it. She mesmerized. She take control and she hold it steady. I'm Armageddon. I'm all up in. She can't control her body. Can't control my hands. She let me know that she got it. She said she about to go ham. Let me celebrate your body. Elevate your lips. We ain't got to ever tell nobody. Might as well grab what you give. Let me celebrate your body. Ooh, I think they want you. Let me celebrate your body So ooh, let's keep them watching Let me celebrate your body Body, elevate your lips We ain't gotta ever tell nobody Matter of fact, let them watch you kids Let me celebrate your body Ooh, I think they want you Let me celebrate your body So ooh, let's keep them watching Let's celebrate your body like your boss gave you that raise All these women up in this club But you got me up in the days She can't control her body Can't control my hands she let me know that she got it. You know she about to go, know she about to go. We can leave when you ready. Baby, you can X around and got credit. When you step up off of that stage, you should have a drink with your fetish. She can't control her body. I can't control my hands. She let me know that she got it. You know she about to go, know she about to go. Let me celebrate your body. Elevate your lips. We ain't got to ever tell nobody. Matter of fact, let them watch you kiss. Let me celebrate your body. Ooh, I think they want let me celebrate your body So ooh, let's keep on watching Let me celebrate your body body, Elevate your lips We ain't got to ever tell nobody Matter of fact, let them watch you kiss Let me celebrate your body Ooh, I think they want you Let me celebrate your body So ooh, let's keep on watching She can't control her body I can't control my hands she let me know that she got it. You know she about to go ham. Can't 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 control her body. Can't can't control my hands. She let me know that she got it. You know she about to go ham. She said she about to go ham. Can't 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 control her body. Can't can't control my hands. She let me know that she got it. You know she about to go. No, she about to go. Let me celebrate your body. Elevate your lips. We ain't gotta ever tell nobody. Matter of fact, let them watch you kiss. Let me celebrate your body. Ooh, I think they watch you. Let me celebrate your body. So ooh, let's keep them watching. Let me celebrate your body. Body, elevate your lips. We ain't gotta ever tell nobody. Matter of fact, let them watch you kiss. Let me celebrate your body. Ooh, I think they watch you. Let me celebrate your body. So ooh, let's keep them watching. Let me celebrate.
celebrate your body. Celebrate your legs. Never tell nobody. Nobody, nobody. I'm not too candy. Celebrate your body. Ooh, I think they watch. Let me celebrate your body. So ooh, let's keep them watching. Let me celebrate.